Hey guys, Sneaky Snake here, Brothers in Arms, World of Warships, and today's video, we're going to take a look at another replay from the Sailing Robin. He's playing in the gearing, the Tier 10 American Destroyer, and he's playing by himself some domination here on the map Shatter. So, we featured one of his Harigumo replays a few weeks ago now, I think that's the third one, and this replay will be the fourth, and to be honest, featuring his content is fantastic. Um, he's one of the best players in the game for a reason. He resides on EU. Somehow, if you don't know who he is, if you haven't checked out any of his amazing montages recently with his Harigumo and Des Moines, respectively, uh, you guys got to go check those out. I'll put those links to those montages in the description below. But they are definitely on the Euro beat level, and Euro himself uh, definitely feels that way. Um, so go check his channel out. Go check his stuff out. He doesn't very he doesn't excuse me He doesn't get the post very often um, But when he does it's fantastic content and fantastic quality so definitely go check his stuff out and uh, Every time that he sends us a replay uh, for the most part we feature it because it's it's good stuff And there is going to be no exception here with this gearing So he's going to actually make a very bold play here now of course one thing it's a big caveat uh, this replay uh, took place before patch 0 0.8.0. Of course, this is the big uh, carrier rework patch that was, what, about three, four weeks ago now? So, um, obviously, there's no carriers in the game. And uh, when you don't get any carriers and it's just the regular surface ships, the gearing is a pretty good destroyer. It falls in line uh, with pretty much all of the other American DDs. They're not necessarily the best at their tier. You could maybe make an argument for the Fletcher at tier 9, but uh, other than that ship, there's no American DD that really stands out. And I guess, well, the Clemson might be the best tier 4 DD, but we're not talking about the clubbing tiers. We're just talking about the normal stuff that you'll play uh, against the majority of the population. It has good torpedoes, very fast set of shooting guns, you know, the 127 millimeters that you're accustomed to. Uh, it's a good set of guns. The arcs are floaty, uh, but when you do get into close range combat, the turrets turn very quickly, and with the rate of fire, you can really pulverize any ship uh, that you come across. Really, the only big threat would be something like a Harigumo, but unfortunately, the Shimakaze, well, at least for him, is definitely not that much of a threat for the gearing. And you can see Robin here is going to town. Now, based off of his reload at 2.3 seconds, um, before you factor in maybe something like Adrenaline Rush, uh, that is with main battery modification 3, so Robin does indeed have a full gunboat build on this bad boy. And you saw how quickly that Shimakaze got obliterated. The Yamato did end up getting the kill, but Robin certainly accounted for most of the damage, about 11,100 on that guy, and now he's going to be able to capture the B point. Um, but the gearing, also really quick, has pretty good concealment, 5.9 kilometers. It has pretty good maneuverability, and it has a decent chunk of hit points with survivability expert at 22,900. So, in keeping with the American ships in the game for the most part, it is jack of all trades, not necessarily the master at any, but it gets the job done. Now you can see here, again, this is a very aggressive play. Shatter, uh, especially around the B cap early game, is a very dangerous place for destroyers to go. Uh, because there are a lot of radar cruisers that like to lurk around and try to get those um, those shots and use their radar right at the beginning to get those guys out of position as that Shimakaze unfortunately bumbled into Robin and some of his other friendly ships. Uh, but you can see here that Robin is now actually well inside the B cap and is being very, very aggressive once again. And this time a Fletcher appears. Now the gearing versus a Fletcher, the gearing really should be able to get the drop and do a lot better of a trade. Even though the Fletcher has a great set of guns, uh, you can see here that he is just getting pulverized as Robin does uh, very quickly about another 11,000 damage to that guy. And he was only able to get off one salvo in return. So an excellent trade by Robin. But because he's one of the most aggro players that I know, well, he's going to go uh, trying to hunt for that kill because when he smells blood, he certainly uh, is able to, uh, most of the time, uh, pounce on it and get the kill. He's also swinging his guns to the left. The Cossack, for whatever reason, is backing up at 7.3 kilometers. You can see that those shells do take a little while to get there, but he does manage to get a few shots right on the booty of that Tier 8 British Destroyer, and then he immediately switches his focus to the Fletcher that's out in front of him, and again, you can see the rate of fire on this gearing is just, well, it's going to make it impossible for this guy uh, to be able to get away without dying. The, the reload is too fast, and Robin's aim, which is also important, is just a little bit too good, and 
the next set of shells that fall in. More incapacitations, and there we go. He picks up the kill on that tier 9 American DD. So very quickly, two frags on the enemy destroyers, and just like that, the enemy team is down three of the four. Very similar to light tanks in World of Tanks. A bad destroyer player will find a way to die within the first five minutes of the game. You can pretty much guarantee that. So at 31,000 damage in a solo base cap with two kills, this would be a pretty decent game for an average player. But, well, I'm going to stroke Robin's ego again. He is certainly well above an average player. And now he's actually got a very good situation ahead of him. You can see that the enemy team only has eight ships left, but the enemy destroyer is on the other side of the map. He helped secure the sea cap for the enemy team. So Robin over here has an Ibuki, a Montana, a Richelieu, and a Conqueror to play with. And this is where the gearing can deal a lot of damage very, very quickly. Now, the torpedoes that the gearing has, 16 and a half kilometers worth of range, which is fantastic. The speed and the damage aren't necessarily that good. It's, I believe, just over a little over 17,000 for the damage. But because you have the great range and the fact that you have 10 of them, you can still heavily cripple or outright nuke pretty much every battleship within your matchmaking tier. Now, Robin does decide to only drop one set of torpedoes. Looks like it's going for the Richelieu, but also if the Conqueror turned back to the right, he would also be running into the path of those torpedoes as well. Robin decides to deploy his next smokescreen, and it looks like he's getting ready to drop his next set of torpedoes to the right. And then he switches back to the left. Not 100% sure what he wants to do here, but he's going to pull forward and then finally decide to drop his torps at the enemy Conqueror. Now you can see that the Richelieu is backing up into his torpedoes. It looks like he's going to get at least two of them, but also the enemy Ibuki appears as well. So you can see Robin's getting some really good shots in there. Looks like that one torpedo is just going to barely miss the Richelieu and impact the Ibuki, and that's exactly what happens as he kills off that tier 9 American heavy, or <laughs> American. Japanese heavy cruiser, but then the enemy conqueror comes around the corner and eats torpedoes as well for about 28,000 points of damage. Of course, the conqueror is going to immediately have to use his damage control, and things are going to get pretty out of hand here very quickly with the damage. As Robin first of all switches his focus back to the Richelieu, trying to maybe get the, the kill secure here, or at the very least get a fire going on that guy, which will stick, but he knows that that Conqueror is absolutely screwed. So as Robin does manage to get a fire on the Richelieu, he's now going to switch his focus here to the enemy Conqueror. And with this full gunboat build at 5.5 kilometers, well, quite frankly, there's really nothing that this poor guy is going to be able to do. He also drops his next set of torpedoes, and you can see if you aim up into the superstructure, you're able to get those nice penetrating hits on the battleships. He could use armor piercing here. Destroyers under 7 kilometers that aren't Soviet can switch to the AP and deal decent damage, and you can see that Robin has actually done exactly that. 2700 on the first salvo, 21 on the second, and you can see just very good. You got to get above the belt armor, of course, but when it falls right into that little strip of, well, non-existent armor, you can deal a lot of damage. In the meantime, while I was blabbering on about AP and HE usage, he managed to kill off the Richelieu with the fires, and now he gets another torpedo hit on the Conqueror. That guy is absolutely screwed, and he picks up the Kraken Unleashed less than eight minutes into this game, 144,000 points of damage and five frags, and there's still five enemy ships left on their team. So, and well, quite frankly, the enemy team has a decent amount of points too. So this looks like a game where they are going to be able to eradicate the entirety of the enemy team. So still plenty more damage to be able to do. And you can see, of course, that the enemy team is now, well, I guess going to focus their forces onto the B cap. That's really the only chance that they have. They got to get on it, get it for their team and start killing stuff. So, of course, Robin is going to about face and go back towards the B cap. But so far what you've seen, good torpedo usage, very bold with the torpedoes, quite honestly, uh, deciding to only drop one set at the Richelieu and then the other at the Conqueror, but it certainly paid off. And that's the kind of high risk, high reward plays that you can get away with uh, if you're very good at predicting with your torpedoes. Now Robin opens up his guns here on the Conqueror and he will get into cover, but not before he gets a very a uh, few good salvos off on him, and right and right there, about, what, seven or eight salvos? He did over 10,000 damage to that guy. Again, you gotta hit the top part of the superstructure, and that's where you're able to do 
a lot of good work. He still has two smoke screens, but then all of a sudden, oh boy, that Grozovoy has picked the wrong fight at about five kilometers when he first got detected, but he's just not going to be able to get away, even though he's smoking up. Robin just continues to pulverize him. He picks up the Confederate. The Grozovoy is now lit by Hydro or Radar or something, but it doesn't matter because Robin manages to get the kill on that tier 10 Soviet DD sixth frag of the game and now he still has 10 seconds left on his smoke screen so it looks like he's going to try to peek forward a little bit into the cap maybe try to get a torpedo angle uh, but there is a chapayev coming through uh, the channel that's off to i guess his southeast there's also another enemy battleship that was around the corner so well uh, he's i guess kind of deciding what he wants to do here he has both of his torpedoes ready and he still has 8,600 hit points. That's not going to be enough to survive a full broadside from any of the BBs left, but he still can take a few salvos from the Chapayev. However, he is playing a little bit dangerous of a game right now um, because, of course, the Chapayev is now well within inside his radar range, and then unfortunately, oh no, the Conqueror appears at four kilometers. Things are not looking good, but fortunately for Mr. Robin, that Conqueror decides to shoot his guns at the enemy battleship, and he does switch to the armored piercing, and you can see once again, more shots going into the side of the Conqueror did a lot of damage, 20 penetrations, and only four shell breaks, some very good stuff. You can see that he's being a little cocky in chat, but he absolutely obliterates the Conqueror as he picks up, well, high caliber and another devastating strike, his seventh frag of the game, 20 236,000 points of damage, and you can see here that he's even peppering this Chapayev a little bit with the high explosive spam. So, very fortunately for him, Robin was not uh, the one that the Conqueror shot at, but then again, the Conqueror made a completely ridiculous play, and for whatever reason, decided to sail full broadside backwards in front of a gearing smokescreen. So, whatever, Robin took advantage of that. And he has had an absolutely preposterous game so far. And quite frankly, there really wasn't any point in this game where I felt that he was going to die. There really wasn't any point in this game where I felt that uh, he wasn't going to be able to deal a large amount of damage. But of course, did we cherry pick one of his replays? Well, quite frankly, no, because this is the kind of stuff that he is able to do on a very consistent basis. The Amato is at 27,000 hit points. He's going to try to go around the corner and maybe drop some torpedoes or get his guns going, but I believe somebody is going to obliterate him any second now. Looks like the Conqueror is going for uh, the Cheek with the AP. Nope, he's got HE loaded, but he still does like a million damage because, well, Conqueror, HE, lol. So, no more damage for Mr. Robin as those torpedoes are going to hit the sinking hulk of that Yamato. The Chapayev is the last ship left at 4,900 hit points, but yeah, Robin has already done plenty enough in this game. And yeah, this is <laughs> some pretty impressive stuff. So with that being said, let's take a look at the post-battle results. Alrighty, guys, taking a look at the post-battle results, 942,000 credits received, 13,300 total experience, and 2.8k free XP. I'd imagine this was his first win of the day. He picked up Confederate. Kraken Unleashed, High Caliber, and Devastating Strike, dealing 244,000 points of damage off of 416 shell hits and 10 torpedoes. He sank 7 enemy ships, set 7 fires, 8 base defense ribbons, and 1 solo base capture. Taking a look at the team score, 3,528 base XP, easily more than doubling the second best player on his team. Yeah, that enemy team really didn't stand a chance, and this was a perfect storm of Robin getting into a very aggressive position, being able to, well, just take advantage of very bad positioning mistakes by the enemy team, and also having enough time to really farm some damage on those enemy BBs. Taking a look at the detailed report, you can see the Conquerors, well, they didn't do so hot. 76 and 77,000 damage dealt by Robin was on those two guys alone. 115k with the main battery and 117k with the torpedoes. So, yeah, some just insane damage to those BBs. And, of course, a few frags on the Destroyers and the Ibuki as well. So, very good game, Robin. Thank you, sir, for sending us this replay. It's always fun to comment on your stuff, and I hope you enjoyed my commentary today. And I hope you guys that watch this enjoyed the replay as well. So, with that being said, this is the Sneaky Snake for BIA World of Warships signing off. Guys and gals, as always, have a great day.